Morning everyone, you've got Jake, Michael and John all here today and we are at the new lease block. So this is in Bonagilla, which is just south of our other farm, which is over the Murray River that way. And there's 40 hectares here, 100 acres, and we've just had about 2 kilometres of polypipe delivered. So we're going to start to load this in the back of our ute and roll it out on the farm so we can the the plan is at the moment we're at the first of december and there's two people currently leasing this property one person's got a lease agreement for half of it and the other person's got an adjustment agreement the landowner has given them both notice so in about a month's time they'll be gone from the property so we're using this opportunity when it's not raining, it's a beautiful day and all the flooding stopped. Uh, although you can see that doesn't normally hold water apparently, so you can see how much water we've had. We're going to use this opportunity of nice weather to roll out some pipe. We're not going to trench it underground because the conditions aren't right. We're just going to roll it on top of ground and the grass will grow over it. We're still in the growing season and insulate it for summer and then we'll try bury it before winter if we're happy with where we've rolled it out. An advantage of putting it above ground is you can test it before you bury it. So we've got inch and a quarter pipe. The landowner has a bore, bore pump, which we're able to suck water out of. Every join we use, we're using a placent T piece with a um, thread on top. So these are our valves that we tap into. So when you uh, drop your key into the top of this turf valve, water starts flowing. So we use the opportunity of every join, there's no point in joining it um, when you could join it and throw a valve off it and just have one extra water source on the property. So every single join will have a valve come out of it and then we're going to make sure that we, every 50 metres, we're also dropping in, where are they? a saddle clamp so that's a saddle clamp so every join we're going to have a valve and then every other 50 meters you just bolt one of these over the pipe you drill a hole in the top there with your drill it's like a 12 or 14 mil hole and then you throw your turf valve in there so it's a long skinny farm so we're going down the whole west side rolling the pipe out and then along the east side of the farm is a river actually the whole length of the way anyway so yeah, that's how we're getting started the people currently leasing to just cut this paddock for silage we're not going to run pipe directly there so we're running pipe on the west side of this fence here, it's a 400 metre long fence, it'll be in the shade most of the time which is nice and if we ever need to put a trough here, which we will, we'll just run a, we'll tap into this valve line and just run a rubber hose over the road to the trough against this fence line which will work fine, you can, you know, it might get driven over once or twice a day, it's not a big deal for a nice quality rubber hose. I've got my work boots on so I can drag the pipe through the mud here. That's why we're not trenching it in. We can't get a trencher in the ground. This is a really easy farm to roll out wire on water and wire just because of its nature. It's, I'll see if I can put a map of it up, but it's long and skinny. So the lay of the land does all the work for you with your decision making. Here's the animals that are currently on adjustment here. Some Angus heifers. So the first 150 meters out, John's just putting a piece of pink tape near the join. What we normally do is we put identifiers on the fence everywhere that there's a turf valve because some, some seasons you'll come out here and the grass can be five foot tall, meter and a half tall, and you have no chance trying to identify where these valves are in the ground. But if you've got a marker on your fence line, then you know where to start looking. So we know where the join is now, so we're going to mark the join, and then when we drill our valves in every 50 metres, we'll mark them as well. I'm going to ask the property owner if he minds us spray painting the pickets, just the top of the pickets white, so because that plastic will deteriorate, but we'll come through, spray the picket, which will last longer term. 
So here's the valve joiner. Join the two ends together. Do you want to grab one of the valves, John? The yellow cap. I'm um, hard. I just don't want stuff to get in the pipe. Debris or whatever. You don't normally have to tape these ends, John, because they've got um, seals in them. Right. So these parts don't aren't a big concern to tape. Yeah. But that part is just a thread. And it's, don't believe it's a tapered thread either. So we normally put some tape on that, but we've never had issues with them leaking, have we? Do you to cut? Wait, keep going, I'll cut it later. Yep. For YouTube, you're back on the YouTube. Oh, I've done mm. a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Good at going backwards. <laughs> Just like reversing. Mark was very good reverser. Where does that come from? Is it when when I first met you when you applied for the job I said, Are you good at reversing? You know, <laughs> pretty good or real good or something. Yeah. <laughs> So we actually, when we first started rolling at wire, or water rather, pipe, we use a local ag shop called, um, well they call Pumps and Mobbles now, but it used to be called Flower Macklin. And I went in and asked them for a spinner, pipe spinner, to make this easier. And they just laughed at me and said we've been rolling out pipe for 40 years or whatever the comment was and we've never once used it, but they actually don't do it like this either. I think I'm gonna sit it on the ground and just pull it from the inside. We've gone through a nice, nice couple of patties there, haven't we? Yeah. Wanna go grab the ute, John? Yep. Rightio. So I'm back at the start. I'm going to cap the end of this because we just tied it up and left it open earlier. What we've got is our inch and a quarter, same as our pipe. Instead of just putting an end cap on it, 
uh, why not put a turf valve on it and have an extra watering point? You'll never have too many watering points. So your turf valve here, that's a one inch thread. So you get an inch and a quarter, 90 degree, to a one inch female. It's female because it's the internal. And then you get your male one inch in there. And then that's gonna be the end of the pipe. So that'll block the water. But if we ever wanna tap our key into the top here for any reason, you know, just say we're gonna be grazing the driveway area. Then we got water right at the property's corner post and we just run a little hose around and off we go. Rightio. That's our fittings. So I didn't tape this thread because there's a rubber seal in there, but I did tape this thread here because there's no seal in that. And then that's where you put your key, your one inch key that you can just run onto a, like a 32 mil rubber garden hose. And when you depress that white thing in there, your key, I don't have one with me, but it snaps under that ring. And when it's depressed, water flow starts, run your rubber hose to a poly trough, plastic trough with a float valve in it, all done. So I don't have a, um, like a walking measure, step measure with me, but I know that between each star pick, it's eight meters and the roll's 150 meters long. I want a valve every 50 meters. So I'm just going to count eight fence posts roughly seven or eight fence posts and it doesn't have to be, it's not rocket science, it doesn't have to be perfect and I'll just throw a saddle clamp and I'll show you how we do that on each spot. This is the client's yards and I really like them. They're really cool yards. So this is the entry from the paddock. So you got your first holding yard here. You got another holding yard here. It's quite large, heaps of shade with our access to straw and hay. Got your bale feeder. Then you've got your chute, which sorts through into the little shed here. And as you get into the start of the chute, you can spit them back and bypass the shed, or you can go through the shed into this circular holding area, spat out into another holding area. Heaps of room. I like the materials he's used. The thicker pieces, they skew a vision a little bit. There's heaps of shade, heaps of room. I just think they're brilliant yards. I'm excited to use them. So the thinking at the moment is, from the home farm in Thaguna, we'll split the we'll split the short horns out. There's about 25 short horns that are all going to carve, hopefully throughout December, with Nguni crosses. We'll bring them here in January, so you know, wait till the calves are a month old or something, and then we'll bring them here. We'll start our plan grazing on this farm with the short horn mob, and at home we'll still have jerseys and goonies. Uh, they'll be about the same size; so they'll be about 35, 40 cattle home. And then uh, with that mob, we're going to retain heifers to breed from everyone that doesn't need any help. So. I don't think we're going to buy any cattle to stock this. It's been set stocked basically from current management. So we'll just graze it lightly, let it have a bit of rest. Uh, it's going to be over summer anyway. There's not going to be much growth in our area. This summer might be wet, but traditionally it's brittle. And yeah, we'll just go light on both farms, save a bit of feed up and just naturally increase the numbers instead of rushing to the sale yards or anything. Here come the boys to give me some tools and I'll get to work. Rightio, so here's the tools. Your ratchet to put on the saddle clamp. I uh, put the nuts in the bottom and then tighten from the head here because if you do it the other way, bottom out. Do you know what I mean? If you put the head underneath and then tighten with the nut, you can't get it all the way tight because you run out of space. So you don't want to do it all the way up because you'll squash the guts out of the pipe. You just want to do it nice and firm. Yeah, in your bags with this kit, there's a rubber seal that goes underneath the thread here. Make sure that gets put in. Tape your valve. Do that up nice and tight. I just do it basically as tight as I can by hand. And then this picket we're under, 
I just spray paint the top white, just a white strip down the tunt there. So when I'm walking up and down the paddock looking for them and the grass is real high, they stick out a bit better. And that's all done.